Yes, my people, this is the official Van Back episode starting in four, three, two, one. Today, in this episode, I'm going to tell you a story. And this story is my story how I got started in the vending machine business. I'm going to take you from the birth of the idea to me getting my first three vending machines. I'm going to touch on some of the challenges I faced and some unorthodox maneuvers I took to get things done. Let's get into it. Wagwan Machine Man! Wagwan, we are done the machine man doing machine things. I'm Jason Edmund, AKA Machine Man, bringing you content in the vending machine business like locations, proposals, products and services, and vending machines. If this is my first time meeting you, Welcome, and I hope you consider subscribing. But if return, I'm a good friend, Joel Betances. Salute and big up yourself. Let's go. All right, back in 2009, I recently got laid off from my job in Washington, D.C., actually in Bladensburg, Maryland. And I was working as a project engineer for a construction company, a concrete subcontractor. And it was a great experience. I happened to come back home just to see my family. I haven't seen them in a while and spend some time with them. So it was 420, April 20th, 2009. And I'm on my veranda in the gym during the evening and I instantly had a craving, hungry, for a specific snack, a honey bun that I used to buy at the vending machine in the library when I was in college. Now, I went to Howard University and I used to work in the in Founders Library. And when I got hungry, I used to always go to the vending machine and get a snack and get a drink. And I was craving a honey bun and I thought to myself, hold up, I haven't seen many vending machines here in Antigua. I thought about it. Then I was like, you know what? Let me go inside and do some research. So I ran inside, went on the computer, did some research. By the very next morning, I was sending emails and making phone calls. I then decided, you know what, this is something I need to look into. This is something I need to do because if there are vending machines here, then there aren't many. And even if they are, the, the industry is still so underdeveloped, I could get in. I went and got my name registered with intellectual property right here at Antigua. I tried to get Vendem. That was the first name I wanted to go with. Vendem. We're gonna vend them snacks. We're gonna vend them sodas. But they they rejected my proposal and they said that the name sounded a little bit aggressive. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and I came up with Have a Snack. Have a Snack is a more user-friendly name. It's more easier. It works way better than Vendem. So it worked out for me. So I came with Have a Snack and I called up my boy Guava the Art. We had a small meeting and held a meditation on, on the idea and the concept. And Guava cranked out a, a nice logo for me in, in a matter of days. And we played with the fonts and everything. A great logo that I still use today. When I had that, that gave me the sense of this is something real, this is something tangible. After that, I went and created some business cards. When I got those printed, just about 50 cards because it just started out. This is nothing, there's nothing going on with the businesses yet. It gave me the confidence to start approaching locations. I approached different locations saying, hey, this is my plan. I plan to bring the vending machines. I think you do very well in the establishment. This is my proposal. This is what I think would be. Then let's do business. Just having that logo, just having that image, just having that business card made me feel like, hey, I'm in business. I'm already in business. So I took my business plan to Antigua and Barbuda Investment Authority. Now this body deals with concessions for small and medium-sized businesses. And they gave me duty-free concessions on my first five vending machines, which is a major help because we don't make machines here in Antigua. So obviously we have to import them. When, you, when they land in Antigua, 
depending on the, 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 what you paid for them and the, the, the freight rates and all that stuff, price keeps going up in terms of taxes you pay to clear those machines. Getting duty-free concessions was integral to my start because that helped me hit the ground running. And big up Investment Authority and big up Mr. Fields down there, he really helped me out. So I'm the type of guy who likes to have some form of literature to look at when I'm getting into something new. And I went to Amazon, went all over, found a book by, uh, I have it here. Found a book by Bill Way. This book is called Vending Success Secrets. Now, I don't know if it's the best book or the worst book. I don't know where it stands in books, but that was a book I bought and I read that book cover to cover so I can get an idea of what I'm going to get myself into. So I could know, hey, this is what the vending machine business is. This is what to expect. These are the things you can do to help a smooth transition. So I bought this book, read it cover to cover and highlighted on the line. I really used that book as my first like a text as, as I studied that book and I don't regret it. Link in the bio by the way if you want to see that book. So it's November and I returned to the DC area and started to take care of things. I had to sell all my possessions that I didn't really need, sold a bunch of my furniture, my bed, my TV, everything. I sold a lot of stuff on Craigslist and eBay, tried to get as much funds as possible. I, I, I dissolved my 401k to help me to purchase my first three vending machines. I sent and got my shirts embroidered, but my logo embroidered onto my shirts so I could have that professional look. Got some polo shirts, as you see the one I'm wearing right now. Got some polo shirts made, so once I get, I can look like a professional, I play the part. People can see that I'm serious. That was very important to me that people know that, hey, I'm here to do business, and I'm not here to just talk about it. I thought having a uniform, having my logo embroidered on a shirt, I think that was, that made me feel more comfortable, made me feel more confident walking into any establishment trying to sell my business to them. Before I flew home, I just said, hey, you know what? I don't know nothing about vending machines. This is 2010 by now, and there wasn't that much of information out there. There wasn't a lot of video content out there on vending machines at the time. I did search, I did look for them. I couldn't find them. I said, hey, let me contact the manufacturer and let me see if I could come and visit you guys and you guys could give me a quick day's training. So I did that. I contacted USI company over in Des Moines, Iowa, and I bought a plane ticket and flew out there from DC to get some training. I uh, met with Ana Santiago, she's great. I met with Joel Barton, he's the GOAT in this vending machine thing. Also Daryl Moore, he's a living legend. These guys gave me the best training possible. My head was doing this when I went and because I didn't know nothing about the vending machine business really except for what I read in that book and from just meeting with these guys. So it really helped me out at that point. So big up Daryl Moore, big up Jerry Barton. These guys helped me out greatly to initiate me into this vending machine thing back in USA in Demo inside where they really showed me the ropes. So I returned home a week before the machines hit and just trying to get things organized, trying to get a team together so I can have the smoothest transition when the machines land. And you know what? Let's go check out that machine. Let's go check out my first machine. Let's go on the road, man. Let's go.
here we are guys I'm at my first account this is my very first location the first machine of the three machines I purchased back in 2010 here it is right behind me guys now this machine right here is my first love this location presents its challenges getting this machine in place now this building is, does not have elevators, there's no freight elevators, so any equipment that comes into the building that has to go on the second or third floor has to come through the staircase. And it was overwhelming just thinking about it. This is my very first machine, this is my very first location, and this combination machine behind me is 1,000 pounds. Now, it was four of us, a good friend, Jevril and, and Kofi, these two guys, they, they helped me orchestrate the entire process of getting the machine in place. These guys have been my movers from day one. And big up Kofi and big up Jevril. We looked up at the staircase, trying to figure out how we're gonna get this machine up these stairs. The building manager, Claudine, she was very instrumental in my start, in my whole process of getting into this vending machine business. She was the very first person to sign my contract. She was the very first person to have faith in what I could do and she said, hey, bring your machine. And big up Claudine, she helped me out. But the building manager, Claudine, she made an announcement on the floor saying, hey guys, we need some help, we need some muscle to bring the machine up on the second floor. And a rock of guys came downstairs. The help was overwhelming. I was like, whoa, so many guys came up and we just pushed the machine up on the, on the second floor. So we finally got the machine up. I ripped up, ripped up some tiles, some carpet tiles that are out there, ripped those up, had to replace those. I'm sure we broke every safety rule in the book, but we got the job done. I'm really happy that this was a genesis. This is where it started, right here, this vending machine right here. Trust me, it was overwhelming. Can you imagine how nervous I was? No, this is my first machine, my first location. I'm nervous as hell, have no idea if the system is going to work. And we, we are presented with this challenge of bringing the machine up on the second floor. But it worked out and thank everybody who played a part. Thank everybody who was instrumental in getting this job done. You're gonna have stumbling blocks, you're gonna have obstacles in the way, but if you can, you can maneuver around them, you can get the job done regardless. And I don't think you should take a hurdle as a problem. Just look at it as a challenge and figure it out. Now to restock this vending machine right here is the same process. We have to bring all the product up the stairs into the kitchen area. And that in itself is a lot of labor intensive work, climbing the stairs with all the heavy drinks, and all, all the heavy chocolate and snacks, all the heavy boxes that you have to lift. And I had to do it. At the time, I didn't have a big van or a big vehicle to take around all, the, all my goods. So I had to take it in my personal car. I have a small little Honda Civic SI 2005. That's what I used to service my locations at the time. It's a very small car, but I figured out a way for it to be able to restock two combination machines like this one. So I remember the process. I used to put two snack boxes behind my seat. Those would be for the second location I visit. Then on top of those two snack boxes, I put two other snack boxes. Those would be for the first location I visit. Then four stacks of drinks for the second location then another four stacks for the first location, then I would put a case of water, two cases of water, then I'll put the Ribena and the Suffragen behind my seat, then in front and the passenger seat right next to me, I would put the chocolate box and other random snacks. It was a whole process, but I used to pack the car, I used to work the hell out of that car, and it, it served me well. As a matter of fact, I, last time I restocked the vending machine using that car was in November of last year, so it's still very fresh in my mind. I still use it as my good old faithful, and um, it's gonna be really hard to let go of that car. But yeah, I love that car, man. So that car took care of all my locations up until up until November of last year. I still I still use it randomly when I feel like it. 
the naysayers. There are a lot of naysayers when I when I started out. A lot of people said, hey, Jason, this machine thing is not gonna work. They said everything in the book that would discourage me. I said, you know what, let me try this. I think it can work. I had a, I felt in my bones it would work. I mean, and it's, to me, it was a no-brain. It's a vending machine, it's convenience. I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's just about people getting accustomed to the system. So I said, no problem, I'll put it in anyway. And I'm here 10 years later doing this video, talking to you guys, trying to encourage you to start your vending machine business. I hope this story gave you some form of inspiration to get the job done. Um, I have challenges, I mean, being an international vending operator, there are challenges that we face, but I, I kind of just look to the challenges as just a challenge, and I, I love challenges. And I put my head down and just put in the work and figure stuff out, ask the questions you need to ask, talk to people we need to talk to. I have a lot of people to thank, but this has been a journey and the journey continues. Guys, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for listening to my story. Hope you're able to extract some value, some substance from my story. If you did, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button for more content on the vending machine business. It helps the channel to grow. Machine man doing machine things. Stay tuned for my next video. And remember, don't back down and stay blessed.